In the previous segment, we discovered the tab index property in that it determines the focus as the user presses the tab key. There is another property which is equally important, and that is the tab stop property, which can be either set to true or false. By default, all controls that can receive focus, their tab stop property is set to true. If you do not want the focus to stop on a control when the user presses the tab key, then set the tab stop property to false. I will use the address text box as our example. Going to the property window for the this text box, I will change the tab stop from true to false. Now if we run this, you'll notice that as I press the tab key, the focus skips the address box. And as I continue to press the tab key, each text box and then the command button will receive focus, but the address text box will not. In fact, by pressing Alt-A, will still prevent or will not allow the text box to receive focus. The only way the user can insert data now into this text box is by using the, the mouse to click into that text box. And now the user will be able to enter data. Remember that the tab index property controls the order of the focus. As you create controls in your form, Visual Basic automatically assigns the tab index property in sequence. When your program begins running, the focus is on the control with the lowest tab index, which is usually zero. Since you want the insertion point to, ap to appear in the first text box in the form, its ta tab index should be set to zero. The next text box should be set to one, the next to two, and so forth. Recall that labels, which do have a tab index property, cannot receive focus. This is the reason that they do not have a tab stop property. But remember, it does have a location within the tab sequence. Another feature that you can use with text boxes, which will, which will prevent the user from entering too much data, is to use the max length property. Once again, I'll use the address box as our demonstration. Notice that there is a max length property for the text box and by default is set to zero. If, for example, I want to change this max length to 10, then what I am now saying is that the user can enter only 10 characters and no more than 10 characters into this text box. This will prevent the user from entering too much data if it is a restricted field. Running the project, you'll notice that I can virtually type in an unlimited number of characters into the name box. When I come down to the address box, remember that we changed the tab stop to false, so I'll need to use the mouse to click into that address box. I now can type in up to 10 characters. I'll type in numbers so that we can count them easily. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And when I try to type in the 11th character, it will not allow me. In fact, I get the beep. So the max length will allow you to put a limit on the number of characters that the user can enter in any given text box. This is really useful for things like a state code where you want them to enter only two characters. One last item that can make your projects user friendly. You may have come to rely on tool tips as they're known in many Windows type applications. These are those small labels that pop up when you pause your pointer over a toolbar button or a control. You can easily add tooltips to your projects by setting the tooltip text property of any control that you want to display a tooltip. Let's use our exit button as our example. If I click on the exit button and scroll in the properties window to the tooltip text property, you'll notice this property is blank. By default, there is not a tooltip text. We could type whatever text we would like into this property. For example, if I want to say close the project. Okay. When I now run this project and I move the cursor over the exit button, you'll see the tooltip shows close the project. 
very easy to do, but when you are creating complex projects, sometimes that tooltip can really help your user out.